I started to look at this historically and within our traditions and my family, and I started to st find out, I wanted to know, I was just curious at the time, what it meant to be of Irish ancestry. So I started reading the folk tales and started thinking about what the Irish were about. And it really became an interesting phenomenon because my father used to take me fishing. That was our one week together, we would go fishing. And I wasn't really that interested in fishing, but he was, and I was interested in being with him, and so I'd go fishing with him. One year we went fishing for salmon. So I started looking into salmon. Well, listen to this. In the ancient Irish traditions, there are five worlds. There's this world, and then there's fairy. And fairy is described as being exactly the same as this world, except it's a little bit better. It's a wonderful idea for a melancholy race, don't you think? And then we go in and out of fairy all the time. We, you know, when the day looks beautiful or something really special happens or, you know, the sunset is, is just makes you uh, breathless. You're in fairy. So I decided to dedicate myself to spending all of my time in fairy. Why not? Right? So what would it be like if the world was the same, but just a little bit better? The next world is called Tir Nanog. It's the land of the forever young. And to get there, you have to go into the shadow, into the darkness. It's the Persephone myth. You go into the ground. You go underground. And the forever young can see us, but we can't see them. And they call us the immortals because we can have children, and they can't. They're also waiting for Armageddon. They're waiting for the world to end in a moment. So we might think, oh, it would be great to be forever young. But wait a second. What would happen if the world ended in a moment? What would happen if we couldn't have children? Is that what we want? And I started to realize that perhaps the culture of those boys in that locker room, were living as if there's no tomorrow. They were forever young. They couldn't see immortality. They were going to die in an instant. And where does that come from? Now, we didn't dive under our desks in Hong Kong, but I found out that kids in that age, at that time, spent third grade doing nuclear attack drills. And so perhaps the United States had had some kind of psychological thing happen as a result of dropping the atomic bombs that all of a sudden we thought maybe the world will end in an instant. Maybe we will be meeting Armageddon. Maybe we should party up because it might all be over in an instant. And we became forever young instead of immortal and we forgot about the children. We didn't design for future generations because there might not be one. Isn't that something? And then I looked further, and it turns out the fourth world is a white tunnel, it's near death experience, and then the last world, no one has ever returned from the last world. And the reason is, it's presumed to be too beautiful. It's called the land of many colored things. And the only animal that the ancient Irish considered was able to go to that land and return was the salmon because it's over the western horizon and the salmon would migrate east-west in their minds and return. And so the kings who were allowed to eat salmon gave the right to eat salmon to poets who knew all the songs. And, and the princes were sent to live with the poets and only the poets in the royal family could eat the salmon because they brought all the nutrients from the ocean. But they also brought the knowledge. Isn't that something? So the poets would be served salmon by the princes. The princes weren't allowed to eat salmon. And then all of a sudden, one day, a, a poet would announce that there was a prince who had eaten of the salmon of all knowledge by mistake and now knew all the songs. And that prince would become the king. This is how they avoided idiot kings. The poets picked the kings. Isn't that something? 
And the, and the criterion was, was you knew the entire oral tradition of the culture if you wanted to be king. Isn't that something? So salmon became something important to me then. And so I have been going fishing in Iceland at the same river for 38 years, every year. And we catch the fish, and we give them a kiss, just in case. And then we put them back. <laughs>